Kevin Fiala has been traded. We react to the trade. We look at the return. We talk about Brock Faber and two players who may be impacted most by this decision. All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, the summit is back as we react to the Kevin Fiala trade. The gang is back and uh, we talk about the players coming back, the player coming back to the wild, the draft pick, Fiala's departure, and we talk about a couple of players who will be massively impacted by this move. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wilds, and as I mentioned, the trifecta is back together. We've got, there it is, Alex McLeddy and Zach, come on, Zach Zeman. I, <laughs> I had the, I practiced that for like an hour, and still got it wrong. but uh, the fellows are all back together, and uh, we obviously have some huge news to discuss. So, guys, let's get right to it. Um, Alex, what was your reaction to the news that Kevin Fiala was dealt to the Los Angeles Kings? Yeah, I for sure thought it was going to be an Eastern uh, Eastern Conference team. Uh, that kind of shocked me that it, uh, you know, that the Kings were the choice. But, you know, the Kings, uh, like I tweeted out to, they are just stocked full of, uh, of really good prospects. And, uh, um, you know, Brock Faber was one of my – favorite uh, college hockey players this season um and you know i think it's uh you know it, it's exciting for the for the wild to get a player like him back and you know happy for kevin um he wasn't going to get the money that he deserved here and so you know he uh he cashed in, in in la and he already looks like he's having fun from from uh videos that i've seen so yeah good good for kevin he's gonna i think he's really gonna enjoy playing with Andre uh, kopitar and and company out out out, out west for sure Zach, your thoughts? Yeah, I love it. I think, you know, the University of Minnesota, the Minnesota Wild Connections have been there since the start, and to see another one join is is super special. Um, I think the Kings are, you know, that organization that's Kevin's fit. I believe that Kevin has the the opportunity to lead that team to something special. They're, they've been outstanding. We all know how their roster is. Um, they're definitely built for something in the future pretty soon here, and to see him get a, you know, get a special spot on that roster and to help lead them is, is really something cool. And I think it just works for both teams. I think Brock Faber is going to be a great fit coming out of university of Minnesota. There's nothing better than right down the road to the XL energy center. So it's going to be something awesome in the future here. It's, it's great. The big thing I think for me and listening to Bill Guerin's comments after the trade was made is that he's been at this decision for a long time and whether or not that's fair to Fiala, not, Maybe, maybe not. Um, it, it sounds like his postseason performance had no impact on this move whatsoever. This was a decision that once it got to Fiala's performance starting to to go up, there just there was no way that the Wilds were going to be able to afford him. And you look at the contracts, seven years for just slightly under $8 million per. Am I crazy to think that that even is a little bit of a low end salary that the uh, that the Kings gave him on his extension Zach what do you think I think it's you know a lot of people I I think it's a little bit too much I don't know I just you know you know last the beginning of the last season you saw he's struggling super slow and then Boldy came into this roster and, and it feel, felt like they were connecting pretty well there um only when Boldy came in so you know that's just been me I feel like Kevin has a new opportunity to prove himself again. And and he got the money he wanted. He got a great price tag. Don't get me wrong. Like, that's a lot of money. He deserves it. No question about it. Um, but now he, now he gets time to lead. He's not, you know, he wasn't in a leading position in Minnesota, I don't think. And now now he really gets the time to step up and show these guys what he's all about. And, you know, he's going to put up points. 
no matter what. He's he's great. We all know he's great. And for the Kings, you know, he finally gets a chance to lead it. And it's going to be really special to see next season. Don't get me wrong. I, I love it for him. Um, maybe a little too much. Obviously, the Wild can afford a single bit of that. But it's going to be great to see in the future. Alex, just under $8 million per for seven years. Do you like that uh, that term, that length for Fiala with the Kings? Yeah, I think it's a home run move by Rob Blake. I mean, he ever since he's been there as the GM, he's 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 turned around that franchise that was kind of in a lull after they uh, won a couple of cups, and uh, you know they're they're kind of integrating uh, their their veterans that have won cups with with them and bringing in some new life. And you see like a guy like Dustin Brown who had been there forever is now retired, but yeah, you know, I mean, you still have the old guard and and Jonathan Quick and. And Drew Doughty when he's fully healthy, and uh, Anze Kopitar. So you know they still have their their vets, and now they're getting the, the younger guys in. And um, you know, like I mentioned to you um, off air, um, you know, Kevin has never played with a center like Anze Kopitar if he gets that chance, or Philip Denall is a hell, heck of a heck of a uh, you know uh, center too. Um, and so uh, either either way, um, you know how he how he figures in their top six, he'll be on their top power play no matter what. And um, in that division uh, that he's in, in the Pacific Division, he could really eat up. Uh, you know, you know, you're playing some struggling teams in San Jose and Anaheim and, and Arizona, or no, well, not, not Arizona, but uh, Edmonton, who struggles defensively, and so. Uh, and you know Kevin, Kevin should you know Kevin should get to that 80, 80 point mark again, no doubt, easily. The one thing I think that um, was also interesting from Bill Guerin is when he mentioned, "Look, if we were going to keep Fiala, we'd have to trade three players to do it this year. We'd have to trade more players after that because." Breaking news: The Wild have a couple of buyouts that they are going to be dealing with for the next few seasons. So what do you think about that notion that Garen viewed this as it's eyes, it's easier to subtract the one player as opposed to just continually trying to pull bananas off the tree um, the further this gets into a, a Fiala deal? Do you, do you think that's right on or what do you think about that comment, Alex? Yeah, I, I 100% agree. Um, you know, we look at the teams that made it deep into the uh you know into the playoffs you know they've built from within and um you know it's it 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 stinks losing a guy like kevin you know no doubt um replacing uh that point production is going to be going to be tough but uh um you know he was never going to make that amount of money here um and you know this allows um you know allows for younger guys to to get a chance and to prove themselves and and you know make that next step um you know this happened uh when uh you know when jason zucker got traded it you know it, it allowed kevin to to grow you know and so um you know now you know let, let's uh let's boldly um get even more more time in prominent uh, uh positions and and marco rossi you know he gets he gets a chance to prove himself to be a full-time NHL player, uh, maybe a top six center. Um, and so that's, that's huge. I mean, when you're in the top six, you're going up against some really good centers, especially in the West. I mean, you, you name it, uh, Ryan O'Reilly, uh, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl. I mean, the name, the names go Elias Lindholm. The names go on and on. Jonathan Taves is, is still, is still cooking. I mean, so, uh, yeah, Anze Kopitar, like we've mentioned. So, um, you know, this, you know, you, you let one guy go, uh, but, you know, it allows uh, some of the younger guys in the organization to make a name for themselves, too. And hopefully one day, you know, earn, earn that same amount of money that Kevin did. But minus the buyout, so, you know, and the cap should be should be going up post COVID here in a couple of years. So, yeah, we'll see. It's it's exciting time to be a wild fan. Like I mentioned, for you to win in the draft or to, for you to win in this league, you have to go through the draft sometimes. It can't always be, uh, you know, getting mega superstars back in trades or, or you know, mega signings in uh, in free agency. And sometimes, you know, you have to make the hard decisions like, like Billy G did and, uh, you know, clean up mistakes of former GM moves. Um, so um, he's not afraid to do that. And, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's made... 
if you look at it, he's made every right decision so far, so you can't can't go against what he's done. Zach, um, easier to just in this case subtract the one banana in Kevin Fiala as opposed to just continually trying to get rid of of assets down the road to make this extension work. Agree or disagree? Yeah, I agree, but it also makes me wonder what, you know, to what extent Kevin Fiala would have had to perform. You know, like, we, in, in the last season, you know, he was up there with Kaprizov in points. He did smash uh, Gabrick's record. So, it's like, to what extent would you have made Kevin Fiala a priority keeping him here in Minnesota? Um, and, and it almost feels like there was absolutely no no option to, you know, then to get rid of him. So, it's like the Wild were kind of in a – even if Fiala was not as good as he was this year, or if he was way better, it was almost inevitable that he was going to get moved. It was kind of just one of those weird situations. And so, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. I, I, like I said, I think he's going to fit well there. And, and I think for, from from a wild standpoint, they did the right move here. And you just got to, you know, I'm not going to say rebuild, but you got to get newer pieces in. And it gives a green, a green light for these prospects like, Rossi and Boldy to really show off what they're really made of here. And I think, you know, moving forward, like Alex said, it's a great time to be a Wild fan. It's a great time to, you know, invest in this organization to see what happens in the near future here because the Wild do have the puzzle pieces down there. And and it all just depends on who can prove, um, you know, to themselves and to this organization that this is what I'm made of and this is what I can do to help this team. And, and I think the Wild can definitely succeed moving forward here. No doubt about it. I think we're going to be surprised as to just how quickly the Wilds come out of this once the buyouts are gone. And I'll tell you why after the break, because we're going to talk about Brock Faber and how he fits in with the Wilds' current top prospect grouping, which is mostly all defensemen. So we'll talk about that and more as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, including league reviews and news, as well as this year's Major League Baseball season and NFL futures. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores, and so much more. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. So head over to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action, all of which can be found at BetOnline, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Listeners, the NHL draft is next week. We've got plans in the works for some coverage from yours truly and others as we react to whatever the Wild do with their two first-round picks. Do they trade up? Do they take two players? Do they do something else? I don't know what the something else could be, but we will have you covered regardless of what they do. So stay tuned for more information on that coming up next week. Seth Topol joined by Zach Zeman and Alex McLeddy. Let's talk Brock Faber a little bit. And Alex, I know you are pretty plugged into the college hockey landscape. So I will let you lead off with this one. What, uh, what should fans know about what Brock Faber brings to the table? Obviously not going to play um, within the next couple of years. He's going to the university of Minnesota. Uh, for this coming season, uh, what uh, what should fans know about Brock Faber? Yeah, I mean, a heck of a day for for Brock. Um, you know, he was named one of the team captains of of the Gophers, and uh, you know that's going to be a top five team in in college hockey. So um, you know, it shows the leadership qualities and what his teammates and and Coach Bob Motzko um, you know thinks of him. Uh, so uh, you know. He, I, I think he's one of the best uh, best players in college hockey. Um, he's a world class uh, skater. Um, he was picked to be on the on the U.S. Olympic team when the NHL pulled out, and so that's how much you know USA hockey you know thinks of him. And you you know he came from the U.S. Uh, National Development Program, so um, you know you know he's been on some great teams um, growing up and. Um, you know, he reminds me a lot of Jonas Brodin. Um, you know, uh, he completely shuts down, you know, other teams' top forwards. 
Um, he plays a ton of minutes. Um, you know, he's always the top uh, ice, uh, you know, minute uh, guy on, on any team that he's been on. And, um, you know, the offensive game is growing. I don't think, you know, some some people see the low point uh, point totals and they freak out. Uh, but, you know, he's only <laughs> he's only 19 years old. So, I mean, you know, people got to realize that he's he's still growing his game. And, uh, yeah, it's exciting uh, return for the you know, for the wild. Um, uh, you know, the Kings, you know, uh, at some points thought he was you know to be a eventual replacement for Drew Doughty. So. Um, you know, I think uh, I think Wild fans should be really excited for the return. And, uh, you know, it's it's pretty cool that he gets to play for his uh, hometown team, for sure. A hundred percent. Zach, defense oriented defenseman with offensive upside. Wouldn't you argue that that is something that the Wilds are in need of at this point? Yeah, I, I, I do like it. I feel like, you know, it's, it's going to be kind of nice. I'm, I'm over here at the University of Missouri, you know, so I don't get, I don't get to watch the uh, Golden Gophers that often. I'm too focused on football and wrestling. So listen to Alex. Rewind and listen to that one more time. Just to, <laughs> just to hit the, the head on the nail there. Uh, I don't have much to say about it. Like I said, I haven't been able to watch a lot of Big Ten hockey. Um, but I'm, I just want to say that, you know, there's not another NHL team that has more scouts than the Minnesota Wild at these ho- at these go for hockey games. They obviously know what's up with this kid. Um, there's obviously some motivation in this, in the you know trading Kevin to the to the Kings here and and not anywhere else because they know they know the you know they know this kid. They're there every single game, so they're right up the road. And and there's obviously something behind that. Um, you know, Brock Faber, born in, in Maple Grove here. It, you know, it's got to be special for him. He's not leaving home. He's going to have a lot of family here. You know, there's that picture of him cheering on Kaprizov during a random goal on, on, the, on the glass there. I mean, that's just got to be so special. That's about to be your future teammate in a couple of years here. Um, so I bet he's just ecstatic right now. Um, and, you know, that just builds character. And, and to, to play for your home team, it definitely gives you some motivation to stay here. And I feel like it really is just going to help a lot. So, like I said, I think it's a great return. Um, there obviously wasn't a lot of offers or, or something, you know. I don't know. We could just keep going back to that. But, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy for Brock Faber. Um, just looking to I, – I talked about this in yesterday's episode, like a, a rapid reaction, and I think it bears repeating, just mainly because I wanted to point to all the, the defenseman prospects that the Wilds currently have in their system. Um, Scott Wheeler did kind of a, a quick reaction ranking of the Wilds' current top ten. Marco Rossi is the one. Jesper Walsh is the two little bit of a gap. Carson Lambos, Brock Faber, Kalen Addison as three, four, and five. Little bit of a gap. Marat Houston-Dinoff, Jack Pert, Ryan O'Rourke, Adam Beckman, Damon Hunt. The Wild have a lot of defensemen prospects, which leads me to believe that they're going to rely heavily on those players to be ready to go, if not on the roster, in the system. By the time the uh, buyouts are in the rearview window. So if we get through these next two years with heavy buyouts and then go to that year where they go down to like a little over a million total, ladies and gentlemen... Minnesota Wilds could very likely have just a glut of defensemen on entry-level contracts to fill out almost all their decor, which is then money to allocate towards go. Oh, wait, no, they're not going to need a goalie either because Jesper Wallstead's going to have the exact same thing. Just throw cash on offense. Grab centers, grab wings, grab whatever you need, and just throw it around Quill Caprizov and go for it. How does that sound? Yeah, it what? sounds wonderful. I mean, uh, uh, I saw a tweet today too that uh, um, you know the the World Juniors are you know coming up again just because they got canceled because of uh, COVID, and Team Canada might have five wild defensemen on it, which is just <laughs> you can't you can't make it up. It's it's insane. You know, probably the best best squad for the World Juniors, and the Wild could have five prospects on the same same squad which is yeah it's it's crazy um yeah i mean and you know it helps having a goalie on an entry level 
Um, you look at you look at Florida, the Florida Panthers, and they're they don't know what to do because they are paying Bob uh, like ten million, Man. and then they're going to have to pay Spencer Knight. So, uh, yeah. and who's going to want to trade for that Bob contract? So, um, you know, and they just lost a forward and Anthony Duclair, which is which is too bad. But, um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's crazy, um, and. Uh, it's nice, uh, you, know, uh, you know, to have those cheaper contracts at key positions, um, and that way um, it can allow you to go wild in free agency um, <laughs> and you know, and and get and rec- recoup uh, an eighty point you know score uh, at some point down the road. Uh, but you build you build through your prospects in the draft, and and the Wilder, you know, they're they're trending upwards, um, and you know, it's it's important that you get your young guys in and so they can develop um at an early age and then when they hit their prime you know you get you get a a bunch of kevin fialas not just one that that you go up and and trade so yeah it's like i said exciting time uh thank goodness that judd brackett is in charge of uh the scouting um i cannot believe vancouver just said here here's here's the golden ticket minnesota wild um, every draft that he's been in charge of so far, there have been hits. Um, and so, especially Wallstead, I'm so excited to finally have a goalie that, you know, is our version of Henrik Lundqvist. That's what he gets compared to. Um, so I'm all I'm all in for that if we if Jesper turns into, into uh, you know, the king. Because the, the other thing, too, the other thing, too, just quickly, Zach, then I'll throw it to oh, you, is that... No um, you know, you, you look a couple years down the road, assuming that the Wild are able to re-sign Matt Boldy, which I'm sure they will. I, I don't think they're going to do the Fiala thing with Matt Boldy, too. Um, otherwise, there's probably something wrong. But you would have your first line in Kaprizov, Boldy, and Rossi all set, ready to rock. So you can afford to go pay another first line to be your second line. Yeah. I yes, think no doubt. The, yeah, the the you know everyone all, the common narrative was, well, we're expecting a a nice draft pick and and a forward to come back in this trade, and you know it's kind of one of those scenarios where it's like, the narrative of, what's who's the best possible player available versus what's the best possible fit for our team in the moment, and I think the Wild could just said, let's just get Carson Lambos and you know or Faber, my bad. Brock Faber, geez, I don't know what I'm thinking here. Brock Faber, and let's just see what happens with it. Oh, my gosh, I'm in a different world. But, uh, you know, it, they also have, you know, four picks, the top 56 picks of the draft. Like, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. So, I mean, I guess we'll never know until we come to draft night what what Judd Brackett has in mind or what the team has in mind um, with those picks. So, it's like I said, you could go center, 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 or forward, right wing, left. You, you can just hammer those picks and see what happens with those guys and let those guys develop. So, there's just a lot of – uh, you know, a lot of what's what's coming up in the future here. So, you know, it's you just got to stay intact and see what happens. Four picks in the top 56. That's a lot of it's a lot of assets. Really easy way to make it all worth it is to just go win the cup during Kevin Fiala's contract with the Kings and have them imagine? not get to one. Can you imagine? <laughs> what I, a weird... Somebody would have to come find me if yeah. we ended up winning the Stanley Cup without Kevin Fiala, but yeah. I don't know. It's For that to happen, we're going to have to get a little bit of a step up from a couple of key wild components, and so we'll talk about that. Great segue to uh, finish up today's episode of Lockdown Wild after this. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. We are breaking down the Kevin Fiala trade. A lot of ripple effects, as I talked about yesterday in uh, the rapid reaction episode. Just reacting more to kind of what led up to the trade, the return itself, and kind of setting the pace for some of those building blocks. Obviously, a big one is that Bill Guerin is banking off of Marco Rossi and Matt Boldy being able to replicate that production that Fiala and Boldy had this past season. So I'll ask you guys just to start Boldy full time being banked on to fill Fiala's production and Rossi being banked on to fill 
Boldy's production from last year. Who do you think has the best chance to do that? Is it Rossi in essentially a half a season per um, overproducing, outperforming? That was the one. I was like, outperforming. Uh, is it Marco Rossi outperforming Matt Boldy's production from last year, or is it Matt Boldy outperforming Kevin Fiala's production from last year? Uh, Zach, which one do you think is more likely? I don't think they necessarily have to prove that they have to outperform the, you know, Fiala's productivity of last year. I think Matt Boldy is an absolute stud on that line. I think he helped Fiala. Like, I'll just reiterate that again. I think when, when, when Boldy came into this lineup, Fiala boomed immediately. And I think if you can have that same connection that those two had with Rossi and Boldy potentially in the future here, there's going to be magic happening on that line. And if you get, if that line works, then the wild would be great moving forward. But until then, we'll never know. But I think, I think Boldy does have a much better chance of, you know, some somewhat getting to Fiala. I don't think he's going to break, you know, Fiala's points last year. Obviously it's, it's very tough to do in this wild organization. Only one guy's done it. So, <laughs> you know, I just think, I think Boldy's that guy. I think Boldy's the guy to stay here. You got to almost give him, a lot of money. I, I would give him as much money as he needs to stay here. He's a great centerpiece to this franchise right now, and I think he can t- definitely help a lot of people with his age, um, and you know, and help this team get you know stay young and, and move forward from here. So I think Boldy's got it. I love Boldy. Yeah, uh, I think the three of us certainly do. Um, I have a take as to who the other line mate may be for those two, but Alex, first, do you think it's more likely that Boldy? gets close to Fiala's production or Rossi gets close to Boldy's production or yeah, I'm, uh, agree with I'm Zach a... <laughs> and not necessarily think that that needs to be the case. Yeah. I'm in agreement on, on Boldy. Um, you know, I think, I think this year was so big for Matt Boldy. Um, we saw um, Caprice you know, how much he struggled in the playoffs against Vegas um, his first time in the playoffs and, and Boldy, uh, kind of struggled against the Blues, and you know, you know, coming into another season here, he has that experience. And if the Wild are fortunate enough to get into the playoffs, I think he'll 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 be dramatically better, um, just like Kaprizov was, mm. as we saw him go on a Kirby Puckett like run to try to will the uh, the Wild to victories against the Blues. Um, you know, unfortunately, he 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 was stuck with a lot of passengers, but. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think Boldy, you know, if he gets a chance to play with Rossi, uh, is going to help do, do wonders. Uh, those two had chemistry in Iowa. And so now they get to reunite it in the NHL, which will be <laughs> just a blast. And if you take a look at Boldy, you know, he's going to be on that top power play. Um, so he's, he'll get a lot of points that way. Uh, Zuccarello, uh, you know, will feed him a lot of uh, opportunities. Same with, the. Uh, with Kaprizov and and then Jared uh, up top there. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting. I can't wait to continue to watch his development. Um, You know, Paul Fenton got a lot of heat, um, but the one thing, one of the best things he did was, was draft uh, Matt Boldy, Uh, you know, and, you know, Cole, Cole Caulfield is starting to show that he can score at an elite level, but Boldy is right there with them too. And I'll take Boldy's size over, over, Cole Caulfield. Um, it's so much fun to have a power forward like that. And and look, Boldy's only 21. Uh, he's going to continue to get uh, stronger. Um, you know, he's not even in his prime, and he he had a great start um, to uh, to his his rookie season. It was fun to see him score in Boston with all of his family there this season, and just looking forward to uh, seeing him continue to develop into uh, what we hope is uh, you know franchise altering uh, player kind of like Kevin was. Yeah, and and you look at the other component to that line. I'm not 100% set that it's going to be Freddie Goudreau because um, Rossi will be the center for that line. And so it makes more sense to have a guy who is a good fit as a center be on a line where he is a center. I'm not, I don't know, and I don't know what the right answer at this point is, if it's Connor Dewar, if it's somebody else in the system if it's free agent for hire that has not yet been added to the team um i just i don't know i think with what freddie goudreau was able to do at the center position 
also acknowledging what what was mentioned in that you know at some points it seemed like he was I don't know it, it seemed the fit at some point seemed like it was kind of square peg round hole with Fiala and Boldy and Goudreau. Um, I it would not shock me at all if we see a different member of this wild team as the third member of that line, and then maybe you have Matt Boldy and Marco Rossi, and that person have just that same level of chemistry and success um, that we saw with the uh, the BFF line. It's it's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, I mean, I want to see um, a guy like Tyson Jones get an opportunity. I mean, this guy was a, a top ten pick. In, in in his draft um, for a reason. Uh, and, you know, Colorado saw the ability, um, but he was just on uh, a team with so much depth. Uh, and, you know, uh, maybe, you know, a change of scenery and a full full year in Minnesota, um, he gets his chance on that second line. Um, I think he's got it in him. Um, you know, he scored at every level. Um, and, you know, playing with two other fast guys, um, you know, because, you know, Tyson's got some wheels. Um and I think I think you give him a chance, um, and you move Freddie back to the fourth line because if you take a look, you probably aren't going to take Hartman away from Kaprizov um, and, and Zuccarello. It just you don't see it, and you you aren't going to you know take Eck away from from uh, Greenway um, and Polino. So um, and you know then the fourth line. <laughs> who knows? Uh, it looks like it's going to be Connor Dewar. And then who knows? You know, I don't think Nick Buke said it's going to be back. Uh, who, for, for whatever reason, the le- the entire league loves Nick Delorier. So he seems like <laughs> he's going to be a hot ticket, even though we take a look at who was in the, in the finals and you don't really see a lot of slow, you know, uh, slow guys out there. So I don't That's know if he'll Colorado. be back. He was a fan favorite for a little bit, but, uh, I, I don't expect him to be back with the with the wild. Yeah, I I I'm intrigued by um, I'm intrigued by Tyson Jost because I think the big thing that he showed with the team last year was versatility in being able to hop up to a couple of different lines when players were out with injury or whatever else. So, yeah, I just I I think. I think there was a little bit of a tendency to lean on players having career seasons. And I just, I want to guard against just assuming that all of those guys can run it back next year. Cause I just, I don't think by and large, that's going to be the case. I'm not necessarily as worried about a guy like Ryan Hartman because of his line mates. You're going to always get chances with Kirill Kaprizov. Marcus Foligno got more chances than he usually does. So maybe that's another. The one, honestly, that I'm most worried about is Freddie Goudreau because it just completely came out of nowhere. So we don't have we don't have that base established of where we can say, well, yeah, he is a 14, 15 goal a year guy. We really don't know. He could be, but he also could be a guy that gives you like two or three goals. So I, I would be totally up for giving that spot to Tyson Jones to just see if he has a chemistry with that grouping, um, but yeah, I don't know. Zach, your thoughts? When you're when you're talking about Tyson Jost and chemistry, I just think about this YouTube. Like they had him mic'd up for one game, and I think it was like right when he got here, or a couple games after, and he was just electric on that mic and just like amping the guys. And you know, and I think he's just. He's just that guy. I mean, it was all about locker room last year, bringing in Flurry, Deloria, all these guys who are just so nice to have, you know, in the, in the behind the scenes action. And I think Tyson Jones can definitely, you know, fit up in a line like that. And I think, you know, just it takes a lot to, you know, show show your happiness and your, your energy in the locker room, but also to show it on the ice and to show that you actually know how to play hockey and you're not just a talker and you're not just a good teammate, that you're actually a great hockey player too. So. It, thank goodness we have a uh, training camp and stuff like that to figure this all out. You know, it's, it's late June right now. So we got a lot of time. Um, actually it's kind of creeping up on us, but you know, it's, it will be pretty good. I think the wild have definitely some, some dice to roll here, some cards to play and we'll, we'll just see how it all falls out in the end. One, one important thing too, is the motivation factor for a guy like Tyson Jones. He just saw his former yeah. team, who who he got drafted by and gets traded at the deadline, 
and and that team ends up winning the Stanley Cup in, in Colorado. Um, so I think we're going to have a really motivated guy this summer, um, and he's going to come into training camp with a chip on his shoulder too. And you know, it 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 it's got to it's got to kill him to you know to not uh, win win the cup with with the guys that he grew up with um, on on that Colorado squad. Um, and so um, I think you know. And there's the motivation factor to to move up in the lineup is huge in this league mm-hmm. because you know guys you know fight to to stay in this league. Um, you'd rather <laughs> you'd rather be staying in five star hotels, going on uh, private jets uh, instead of buses to you know Des Moines, Iowa, Rock Rockford, Illinois. I mean, um, you know they the always hungry league as they call the AHL is is not glamorous compared to to the NHL lifestyle. And so, you know, when you're, when you're in top six minutes, which, you know, he's always had throughout his career. And when he got to the NHL, he was stuck on the fourth line in Colorado. It's motivating to, you know, to, to play more instead of getting, you know, eight, nine minutes a game. It's uh, it can be, it can be tough on a player. And so I think, uh, you know, just like like Billy uh, Billy said, there's going to be opportunities for for guys to step up, and we'll see if uh, if Tyson uh, wants to take it if it's there for him. Yeah, those those bottom line opportunities are for guys that are chasing Stanley Cup rings, and so they go to a contender to uh, to try to get that trophy. What did I say? Rings. Um, <laughs> trying to trace that Even chase rings. that trophy before their uh, their career is over, much like Corey Perry. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh. Poor guy. Oh he my just goodness. did that to him. He just did that to yeah. him. I oh. I couldn't help it. I, I, I've been sitting on that one for <laughs> like three days, and I wanted to just organically work it in. <laughs> this was the opportunity for uh, for that to be done. And oh. yeah, I I mean, we could continue, but I, I don't know how we recover after that. Um, <laughs> he, hit, he hit the grand slam out of the park. That was... Uh, you, just, you just shut the door on us. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, you know that was unfortunate for Corey Perry. As here's a deep drive to left field off the bat of Castellanos. That's <laughs> yes, awesome. yes. All right, we're getting we're getting memey, but I think that's a great spot to leave things for this episode. We we have no shortage now of talkers going into the season of, like you said, McLeady motivation for players. Um, I think that's going to be a huge factor. I think it's going to be a huge factor for this team too. After what happened Even in the playoffs. Fiala. And with Kevin Fiala as well. So a lot to talk about. And so we'll keep you up to date the rest of the summer. So make sure to stick with us here at Lockdown Wild. Uh, Make sure to follow along wherever you listen. Follow us on social media. We've got you covered everywhere. So just hit follow and subscribe. We have new episodes coming out every Monday through Friday to keep you up to date with all things Minnesota Wild related as part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network.